All right, we're in it. Back to Horizon. So yeah, as I was saying, 50 Beast Master. I can't, I can't level up anymore. I just, I can't. Not until I do the the limit break. So I'm actually putting off the limit break for a while. I want to, I want to work on my character overall. So some things I've been doing. So fishing is up to 35 now. Um, I can catch some good stuff. I have two levels of cloth craft, which I only want to level up like all of the crafts a little bit, so that I can descent things. Because descent thing, there's there's good money in that. Uh, and then cooking is going to be my main trade skill. I've got that up to level 16. Like you can do a lot with trade skills in FF11 if you if you work on them, if you build it up. Alright, so, uh, Ninja Quest, Ninja Quest. It starts in Bastok, so uh, we need to go to Port Bastok. Also, in my inventory, yeah, I've got a bunch of Wind Crystals. I, I killed a Wind Elemental, and I got some Clusters. But yeah, I, I, uh, I have lots of crafting materials on me right now. I killed a bunch of Yagudo for their necklaces. So we're gonna do some actual crafting, but... I would like to start up the ninja quest first. Also, yeah, I, I don't have a weapon on right now. I So look, maybe this is just me, but when I'm just kind of chilling in town, or fishing, crafting, whatever, I tend to not put a weapon on. I I, I go civilian mode, right? That's That's how I do it. But we're, we're about to get into some questing now, so now we're gonna need... Yeah, I'm gonna need my axe. And the maple. Look, the maple shield, it's just so that I have a block chance, that's all. Oh yeah, also, I, uh, I, I killed a named monster and I got this rare... Uh, not sword, this rare axe. The Tabar. It is Beastmaster exclusive. Now, I didn't camp the enemy, just to be clear, I did not camp. I literally was just, I was going through Kufam Island, just killing elementals and stuff, you know, like I normally do to farm money. And, uh, there was just a named monster up, and I killed it, and it dropped a pretty good axe. I think the axe is worth maybe 15,000 gil, something, something like that. Also, I'm up to... Almost 270,000 gil. <laughs> the thing is, I would have well over 300,000 if it wasn't for all of the crafting. Leveling up trade skills costs a lot of money. Like, a lot. Like, I, uh... Like, you can just burn money. Just burn it by, uh, by, by trying to do trade skills. And hold on, let me just check my, uh... I always like to check my delivery box, see if anything's sold. Yeah, I got some Silver Beast coins, I, I sold those. So hey, now we're over 270,000. <laughs> Which, oh, uh, Vexus, if you're still, if you're still around, uh... I, uh, because of cooking, I can actually make some, uh... I can make apple juice pretty reliably now. Uh, it gives the refresh effect, so like, it, it gives regenerating MP. Um, they're very, very cheap to make. So hey, if you need some mage drinks, I got you covered. I can just mail them to you. <laughs> it's, it's actually what I'm leveling up on right now. Like, uh, it, you can level up on apple juice all the way to level 20, so... So I'm crafting a ton of them, and not really selling them, I'm just vendor trashing them, so... Alright, uh, let's see, do I need anything from my mog? Uh, not really. I don't really need anything from my mog house. Oh, I have all those B 
beast men seals. <clears throat> ah. Well, I was just gonna send you the drinks, because literally I, um... So, okay, on the auction house, uh, apple juice goes for about 250-ish gil each. Like, for each individual drink. Um, but the thing is, is because I'm, like... The way that I'm crafting, I'm just cranking these things out, and then I'm selling them, like, at an NPC for, like, 80 gil, which is almost nothing. <laughs> and, like, I'm just cranking them out to level up, so I can just send you, like, a, a mailbox full of them. You know, free of charge. <laughs> Again, they just get vendor trashed, uh, so... Yeah, like, I mean, when you get around, you know, when you get around to playing again, hey, you'll have a bunch of mage drinks in your, <laughs> in your moog, in, in your, uh, you know, your mog house, so, hey, it works out. I, I think I have all the, uh, yeah, I have all the items to even make it on me right now. Like, all it, all it takes is four fairy apples and a water crystal, and these are, these are dirt cheap. <laughs> That's why I'm leveling up on them. Okay, uh, so I did the alleyway quest for all the starter towns, so I can just exit out at Port Bastok. See, I've been getting real into this game. Now, to be fair, most of what I do in this game, it's very hands-off stuff. Like, you know, you can just craft whenever, wherever, and I, I just, like, set it and forget it. Same goes for fishing, you know, it's very low interactivity. Uh, I, I don't do a lot of, like, super intense, game needs all of my attention now kind of thing. I, I don't do that too often. <laughs> but I've been uh, just working on my character and getting that gill. And it's fun. It's just it's a fun little, fun diversion. Alright, so, uh, let's see. I, let me just check. I have a website up. So I need to talk to, to begin all this, I need to talk to Ensetsu in Port Bastok. He's gonna be at I-5. So I-5 would be... Uh, be this house up here. So, kind of a, a house at the northern corner of the map. But also, as far as, um... So I chose very correctly by being a beast master. Like as a beast master, even when I'm like fighting, it's very laid back. Because you know, you just have a pet that can kill things for you, right? So I pretty much chose the most uh casual way to play FF11, and it, it's working out for me. I I tend to um like, with this game, I tend to get frustrated with it and quit, because a lot, a lot of the classes in this game are very fun, but they require a lot of investment. Like, either time, gill, both, uh, just skill. So, it can be very draining to play a lot of the, the classes in the game. But Beastmaster is such a chill class. It's uh, it's relaxing to play. It's it's kind of like the fishing of normal combat jobs. Okay, so I think this is Ensetsu's house. Yeah, here we go. Hey, we got matching shirts. Are you looking for something? There's nothing here you would want. If you are looking for my daughter Ayame, she is working at the president's office. She does not come back home often. So I, I think then that's my cue, right? Hmm. Or, okay, okay, well let's talk to... So, okay, first off, first off, first off, let's say this, um, so this is a big quest, right? Like, this is how you unlock ninja. But think about this real quick. How would you know, without looking at a guide, to do this? Like, how would you know to go to some random house in Bastog, talk to that dude, who, I mean, honestly, it, it didn't really seem like a quest, right? And then you have to sequentially talk to his daughter here, and then you have to... How would you know? 
right? How would you stumble into that? Oh, philosophy. I I will admit I've never been a, b a big book reader myself. Uh, the the ADHD kind of gets in the way of that. Um, I, I I'm gonna be honest. I haven't read a like I haven't sat down and actually read a book in quite a while. And not to say that I haven't read, it's just not like a standard format book, right? I haven't read a book in quite a long time. And that's just kind of a, again, attention problems. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, I, I mean, Burn, that's kind of how, uh... That's kind of how it was back in the day, is you, you just sort of had to, you had to know, you had to sense it, sense the quest, and then, and then there would be quests that nobody knew about for years. But fortunately, we have the, we have the advantage of living in the future, where there's wikis for all these things. Uh, we have that advantage. Okay, here we go. We're we're on the tail of the quest now. All right. Hey, have you heard of my sister Ayami? She's a samurai and a member of the Mithril Musketeers. She's so cool. Me, I'm nothing compared to her. But I was thinking, if I could use a katana too, I would be cool and strong like her. Man, this, I feel like, this is like. This is Burn here. This is this is every weeb playing FF11. Like, if only I had my katana, I'd be cool too. I know, man. I feel you. <laughs> uh, when I, uh, okay, when I asked my dad about it, he got mad and said I couldn't. My dad's been acting strange lately. I think that he's been visiting that Kagetora from the Tenshoto. Oh no. Hey, dude, what are you up to now? You know you shouldn't be bothering our visitors. Hmm. I just know he's hiding something. Okay. So, again... So, again, like, that didn't go anywhere, right? That literally didn't go anywhere, so... Okay, let's bust open the walkthrough. <laughs> okay, so we talked to... So now... So now we have to go to Kagator. I, I guess they did mention him, right? Yeah, I, I guess technically they did mention the name and the Tenshodo. But here's the thing. How would you know? How would you know where the Tenshodo are? It's not on the map. Okay, so we're, we need to go to warehouse number two. Uh, again the criminal black market organization. Uh, yeah, they don't mark that on the map. <laughs> so, you just have to know to go down to warehouse number two. <laughs> uh, also Vexus. Yeah, like my, my main issue with like reading any book is that because of attention issues and all that, I tend to I tend to reread the same pages over and over, and it gets frustrating. <laughs> Though, you know, uh, what works for me is, like, I like, look, I like tabletop books, okay? Say what you will about that, but tabletop books, be I think because you don't have to necessarily read them sequentially, like, they're reference books, right? So you, you reference them, you look into them, and, you know, you read a few paragraphs or pages of information that you find interesting uh, but you don't have like you don't read it from cover to cover and I, I think that sort of reading works better for me hmm. huh. I, I, uh, I haven't really looked any into Final Fantasy 16. Again, I feel like, uh... I, fe I feel like maybe I'm not the target audience for Final Fantasy anymore. You know, I, I, I've kind of been getting that feeling ever since 13, right? Like, ever since 13, I feel like maybe, maybe this isn't for me. 
but I don't know, if, if 16 is actually good, and like if they're returning to form of making good games, then maybe, maybe. Alright, so the, the quest continues. What do you want? You want to know about Insetsu? Can't even hide something from his kid. Uh, that would explain why he was... Uh, he never was called for battle. Also, does he have, like, the Naruto ninja headband thing? <laughs> Alright, if you want to know why... Wait, if you want to know why that old man is coming here, uh, you ask him yourself. He's obviously having money problems. Maybe you can help him out. How do I know Insetsu? I guess you could ask the lady we both loved for that answer. <laughs> I... See... Like, okay, so, back to the walkthrough. Okay, so it, it's just back to Insetsu now. Alright. I mean, I, I guess from there I could infer that I need to talk to Insetsu again, but he, he kind of dropped a red herring, which is, oh, talk to the lady that we both loved, and it's like, well, well we're the... What, what the fuck does that mean? Hmm. Oh yeah, the, uh, Burn, the, the FF7 remake, um, my only real issue with that is that it's not the complete story, right? Like, there, it's, it's not done, it's not all of FF7, right? Like, if they eventually finish that shit, then sure, I'll play that. I don't know, it looks fine. <laughs> it looks fine. But I, I think it would drive me a little bit mad to have not the full exp- like, when you know that they're- like, you know how FF7 goes, and you know this isn't the whole story, that'd be a little maddening, I think. Hmm. Oh, and FF13. I, I don't know if that was delayed or not. I don't know much about FF13's development. I know I had issues with the gameplay of it. <laughs> Um, you know, final, final hallway 13. Though, it, to be fair, it does open up and become a pretty fun open, uh, like, like, open RPG, uh, after about, what, 50 hours? <laughs> and, and that's, like, right near the end. Oh? Well, it's, uh, so, like, it's basically near the end of the game when it opens up. Um... <laughs> It's kind of weird, too, because, like, the game has no side quests or anything until you, like, go down to the big open world area and then suddenly there's side quests and all kinds of shit you can do. Um, and then, but the goal is just to get back to where you were and beat the game. Um, <laughs> it's strange how they did that. I don't... <laughs> Oh. Hmm. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, I know, like, the FF15 thing, but... Yeah, 13 is just, it's its a completely linear game until suddenly it opens up and now there's side quests and shit. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, I mean, to me, 15 mostly feels consistent, if just weird. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Probably. I guess, okay, for me, the issue with 13 is mostly that 
it, it does feel like there's two entirely different games clashing. Like, you have the very linear, no diversions, no side quests, no NPCs even, just a hallway that you fight down for like 50 hours, um, with cutscenes interspersed. And then when you escape, like, you know, that area, and you go to, uh, you know, to like the world below, uh, since you're like in the, a weird Dyson Sphere thing, so when you go to the actual planet below, then it's like, oh, now it's an open world, there's, you know, side content, there's, you can just hunt things, that you can ride chocobos around, like, it, it feels like a completely different game. <laughs> We <laughs> hmm. spent a lot of time building a tunnel. Yeah. And they wanted to spend like three much as much, uh, three times as much time hmm. building the main quest after that tunnel. Yeah. And then they realized we're out of budget, we're out of time. <laughs> hmm. So we can't finish what we wanted to make. Yeah, I do feel like maybe they intended. Like, they intended for there to be some branching with that tunnel, like, that they intended to build onto it, but then they just couldn't. <laughs> and then I guess the big open world section was just, that's what's left, I guess. <laughs> well, to be fair, the big open world is very empty feeling, but it's at least, you know, yeah. Yeah. And then management told us we out of money. Yeah, yeah. I'd be curious to look more into it to see how how exactly that went down. <laughs> but mainly, I feel like, you know, even if the game was still a mess, but like, I feel like if they started the game with the big open section, even if it's a little empty, and then you go to the hallway, I, I honestly think the game would have been received a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so okay, let's get back to this ninja quest. I, I gotta be a ninja master. We, we get distracted very easily. <laughs> all right, so Kagetora told you, what? Uh, what was he thinking? He usually isn't the type to go telling other people secrets. Secrets? What secrets? I knew you were hiding something, Father. Not hiding anything. Children should keep their noses out of other, or out of their parents' business. Stop treating me like I'm a child. You were never like this with Iyame. I know I can learn to use a katana and be cool, just like. I look. Okay, look. I love this dialogue. This dialogue is exactly what, like, this is what I think of when I think of Final Fantasy and <laughs> weeb shit, right? You know, small child's like. It's like, no, Dad, I can use a katana and be cool, too! I'll teach you! I'll show you my true power level! <laughs> uh. Again, this is just a little burn here. <laughs> Katie. Father, you, you are buying your katana from Mr. Kagatora, aren't you? You can use one, can't you? Ayame says she went on a journey to learn the ways of the blade, but I bet it was you who taught her. Wh what are you talking about? I hate you! Why won't you tell me the truth? Uh... <laughs> I want to be cool katana user too. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I like this. I really like this cutscene dialogue. <laughs> I mean, for unlocking ninja, this is this is what I want. Uh, I'm sorry that you had to see that. Girls these days grow up so fast. What is a father to do? One day, I know I'll have to tell her the truth about... Dot dot dot. Excuse me. I know that you must be busy. But could I ask a favor of you? I would like to buy something... Uh, to buy something back that I recently sold through the Tenshoto. However, I was told by Kagetora that it has already been shipped to Nor. He told me that if I bring him some strangely shaped coral from the Koraloka Tunnel, he would return my item. However, there is no way that I would survive a trip to the tunnel. 
I would be in your debt if you could travel there in my place. No, see, look, if you're really, if you're really lucky, Burn, you get Shadow the Hedgehog dressed up as Naruto. <laughs> if you're really lucky. Alright, so I, I must have become a ninja master. I, I I feel like I should... Okay, I guess, honestly, I should just unlock all the jobs at some point, but... I, I think I want to unlock Samurai, too. I gotta be a Sam. And the great thing about this game is, you can be both a Samurai and a ninja at the same time. <laughs> okay, so, referencing the guide. Hold up. Okay, so now we need to go to Koraloka Tunnel, um, and we need to fight three Koraloka Leeches. So we have to go to K, K slash L8, and that'll spawn the Leeches. Okay. So K slash L8 in Koraloka Tunnel. I can handle that. Uh, quickest way to get there would be to go to the Mines District through, uh, through my Mog House. That'd be the quickest way. But, uh, ninja is one of those classes that I... Like, ninja has a lot of utility in this game. Like, no matter what class you are, there's always a good use for ninja. And it's both because of dual wield and because of the ninja magic. Like, both are very useful to have. Like, if I, uh, if I was... If if I was a, a Beastmaster Ninja, then I could dual wield these axes and just crank out a shitload of damage. I could also use Utsa Semi Ichi, which uh, just lets me completely dodge damage like three times in a row. So there, there's a lot of reason to go Ninja, uh, no matter what class you're playing. So unfortunately that means I'm gonna have to level up Ninja though. Like, I'm actually gonna have to use it. Ugh. <laughs> Alright, so. Swinging on around into the Mog House. The, uh... The back alley quests that you can do, I find those are just, man, they're great. You want to do those in every single one of the starting nations. You can do it in Juno, too, and I did. Uh, in Juno, it doesn't really do a whole lot, though. Since in, in Juno, the residential district is in the middle of the city, and it just exits out everywhere, no matter what. So, <laughs> it doesn't really save a whole lot of time there. But in the starter cities, it's great. Just checking my, uh, look, I, I have things on the auction house. I, I need that money. <laughs> okay, so let's exit out to Bastok Mines, and then we go into the mines, into Zerun Mines. And then from there, we go into Koraloka Tunnel, and we shouldn't have much difficulty. I'm, I'm level 50, I really, I put off getting Ninja for a real long time. So I should not have any issues getting to where I need to go and fighting the enemies that I need to fight. It should be a simple affair. The biggest problem with unlocking ninja is, it, well, it's twofold. One, you need to fight three leeches at a time, and that's something that even a level 50 might struggle with if they're not a beast master. But then the other problem is you have to get to Norg. And getting to Norg means you need the Kazam Airship Pass. And that's a whole ordeal in itself. So, for classes like Ninja, there's some hoops that you have to jump through. They're, they're not overly difficult hoops, but they are, you know, they're hoops all the same. I mean, one of my favorite classes in this game is Summoner, and man, unlocking Summoner is, it's not hard, 
you know, don't get me wrong, it isn't hard at all, but it is incredibly tedious and time-consuming on multiple levels. And then once you actually get Summoner, well, then you have to fight all the avatars to be able to summon them. And that's, uh, again... Okay, actually, that one... That one falls into hard territory. That's actually hard if you do the solo fights. But that's FF11. F FF11 is a game that likes to really, really make you suffer. You know, make you, make you sweat. Okay, so yeah, this is a very, very simple, quick map. Straight on over to Coraloka Tunnel. I, something I've always wondered about. So this gate guard here, he stops you and it's like, oh, only real adventurers can go in. I've never been stopped by this guy. Yeah, like not anyone can go in, but I, I have never not been able to go through those doors. I, I, I'm wondering if there is actually any requirement, or if he just lets everyone in no matter what, and it's all just theater, right? I don't, I don't know. I mean, to be fair, uh, I usually don't have any reason to go into Coraloka Tunnel until I'm, you know, a couple levels in, ranked up to at least two. So maybe there are some requirements. It's, it's just something I never noticed before. M maybe. I don't know. Alright, so I, uh, in preparation for this, I already went ahead to, uh, Rabao, or Rabeo, however you pronounce it, and I bought maps for, like, the whole Kuzats region, Horoloka Tunnel. I, I have my maps down because I refuse to use all maps. I, I want that vanilla experience on this one. Okay, so Coraloka Tunnel, it is a very straightforward map. So we need to go to, so go to K slash L8, K, K L8. So, uh, let's see, so K L8. Uh, that's pretty close. Like, am I reading that right? <laughs> like, I'm already in L7. I... Hmm. Like, is, is there, like, a, an offshoot? Or, uh... I seem to remember the leeches spawning in like a like a side room, right? Well, hold up. I'm in J8 now. So th is this can't be right. <laughs> K/L8. Huh. Let me look at the... Hmm. I, I feel like this might not be accurate. Let me let me take a look at something. I'm gonna look at the map. So, okay, uh... Does, does the, uh... Does the map of this on the wiki... Does it highlight where the leeches spawn? It... Okay, wait, it does, actually. Maybe? This is difficult to read. <laughs> this is... Okay, okay, I see. I see where it is. So, uh... Okay, if we want to get to where we need to go... We do need to go to K slash L8. But, that is not where the leech is. At all. Like, that is, that is not where the leech is in any way. So you have to go down this side tunnel right here that isn't... Yeah, look at this. This isn't even on the map. So yeah, this is what you gotta do. This right here. Uh, let's go ahead and summon up our beast. Hmm. 
Yeah, so we're just we're just going completely off map for this one. But now looking at a more detailed map, so if I just follow this, I get onto kind of the north side of the tunnel, but on like the upper part of it. Uh, just keep going west. Yeah, just just keep going west. Yeah, this puts us up here. So the thing is. From what I can tell, there is only one way to get up here, and that's the way we came. Otherwise, or if we fall, you gotta go all the way back to the beginning again. That's, uh, that's not great. <laughs> that's, that's not great. But up here, yeah, like up here, whole different, whole different play area. And a lot of... A lot of the places we're gonna go are just not even on the map. I I have to be honest, this map of Coraloka Tunnel, kind of useless, ki kind of pointless, really. Okay, so I'm looking at the more accurate map. Yeah, so on the more accurate map, we just keep going in this direction. Yeah, we, we basically go west as far as we can go, and when we can go west no further, then we go north, and then I think we there'll be a drop down. This is a quest where I, I would not really want to do it without some external references, some, <laughs> some reference material. Where, where the hell am I? Yeah, see, I'm I'm off the map again. Yeah, where am I? Not on the map, that's where. Alright, so yeah, just, just keep going west. Keep going west. Now, I, I want to go back to the idea that for this quest that we are on, for this quest we are on, they don't give you any actual direction of, like, where to go, right? Like, like, none. All the quest said was go to Coraloka Tunnel and, and, uh, get some coral. That's all the, the quest said. Now, considering how large Coraloka Tunnel is and how much of it is not even on the map, if you didn't have a wiki telling you exactly where to go, or if, if you didn't have a guide, like some player that's like, hey, yeah, the, the thing you need, it's there, right? If you didn't have that... I... I don't know... That this would be possible. I'm not. I'm not sure exactly how you would, like how you would go about doing this quest. Okay, so we're at another fork in the road. Go up this way. So very shortly we should cr come across like a, a drop down point. Yeah, right here. So this is where we need to go. There's some bogeys down there. None of them look to be very threatening. That's a lot of bogeys. I wonder if they drop anything good. Probably not. Let's get in there. So yeah, if, if you were not level 50, like I am, you know, if you were horribly overleveled for this, then... Uh, this would be a little bit of a nightmare. A, a little bit of a nightmare to navigate and actually do what you're supposed to do here. So there should be... here it is. There is a, a question marks. So, let's take out the leeches that are here. Maybe, uh... 
I don't think we'll have an issue. You know. Buff up a little first, aren't you? Just, to, just in case. Just in case something goes horrible. Oh yeah, no, there's some really good monsters in here, and I, I'm pretty sure a lot of the models in this game, literally they just poured it over to FF14 because they're that good, right? <laughs> Like, keep in mind, this is a PlayStation 2 game. This is literally a PS2 game. <laughs> Literal PS2 graphics. But, I mean, you just look at a lot of these enemies and how they're modeled and how they animate, and, I mean, they're they're very modern, actually, in, in concept. Like, all they need is some more polygons, you know, just round them out a little more, and... and that's what they did, and they put them into FF14. Yeah, like, oh, oh god, like the, like, okay, this crab right here, this exact model is in Final Fantasy XIV. I fought this crab in FF14. <laughs> um, the, uh, like the Gyguses, the, the giants, I'm pretty sure they just kind of tweaked them a little and just put them right into FF14. It's... There are so many models. The goblins. Yeah, there, there's so many, they just kind of polished up and slapped them right into FF14. And, you know, hey, if it works, it works, right? I mean, what that means is, they did a really fucking good job the first time. And there, there's not really that much room for improvement, right? Oh god, a 4K mod for FF11. <laughs> I mean, look, I don't even have a 4K, like, monitor or anything. I can't... I'm, I'm still in 10, 1080p land. But you know what? That's that's good enough for me. <laughs> Alright, well, let's, uh, let's get our coral. So I have to be ready to get into a fight here. Yeah, yeah, here we go. This is where it gets intense. <laughs> Not really. I don't know. Level 50. It should be fun. So what I want to do is ready up. Bubble shower! And again. Crab familiar! Use bubble shower! It's not very effective, these are water enemies, but it, it keeps the aggro on. <laughs> I mean, I, I would be. Oh, hey, look! I, I get gill out of these. Didn't know they'd be gill for uh, Like, they have gill in them. But yeah, I, uh. I do have interest for, like, texture packs for FF11. I mean, here on Horizon XI, they do have... Like, I'm playing with a texture pack that they just provide for the launcher. Because uh, I'm, I'm lazy like that, but... But, like, yeah, we already have a texture pack on here, and it does look a lot better than the default models. The, the default FF11 textures are very, very blurry. Um, and again, it's it's PlayStation 2, right? But that's fine. That's fine. I got I got no issue with. I mean, look over on Kick, you know, I was literally playing PS1 games, right? I played Bubsy 3D. I I clearly don't have any sense of taste. Okay, so all leech is dead. I got a little gill. That's nice. And we got the strangely shaped coral. So now let me let me uh, reference that wiki again. Hold up, let me reference it. So I got the coral. Do I have to go back to Insetsu? Uh, let's see. So I killed the leeches. I I got the strangely shaped coral. So now I need to return the coral to Ins. Okay, so we have to go back to Bastok. See, this is. This is where the game gets you. This is where it gets you. Because, okay, now, Insetsu wanted me to, like, he wanted me to get the coral and to to take it to Norg and, and trade for his thing, right? So what if, what if I got the coral and then I just went off to, to Norg and, uh, yeah, just... Well, you know, I guess that would have all been for nothing, huh? 
guess that would be for nothing. Alright, so it, it's just a walk back the way we came, and I don't know, I might kill some things too, because, I mean, I'm level 50, I can do that. But also, I'm, I'm pretty sure some enemies in here have decent drops. Like, if they drop something, it might actually be worth it, so... You know, sure, let's kill a few things, right? Okay, so this is... yeah, this is where we... Next one. Next one we drop down. Also, I wonder, I, I'm not paying too close attention to uh, to the actual, like, just people popping in and out here. It's a chill day, you know, we chill. Uh, if you got, hey, if you're here and you want to talk about something, fire off. That's what the, uh, that's what the, uh, FF11 and chill streams are for. But, uh, I do wonder, to the ones that just kind of pop in, pop out, if it's like, oh, what is this? This this is not the Final Fantasy XI I know and love. Guffaw! And, and then they just, you know, they storm out. I, I don't know. <laughs> this imaginary person that gets very upset at Horizon XI. Okay, so yeah, we just go east and... We'll be back at uh, back at Pistock. So okay, this this jelly here. I'm pretty sure jellies drop like they drop some kind of oil. I think that might be worth something. I mean, I guess I like. <laughs> The funny, I, I, I have no ill will to, uh, which also, hey, nice you're still here, but I have no ill will to people that like retail, it's just, I don't play that for a couple reasons. One, I like free, um, but two, I literally couldn't get the Play Online launcher to work. Like, Square Enix needs to do something. <laughs> uh, the, but the other thing is, is that it's just a very different game. Like, the thing is, I, I played FF11 when I was, like, a teenager, right? Uh, I think Chains of Promathia was the... Like, that was the expansion that I played, and it's when I quit. But it's what I have the nostalgia for, right? Like, when I think of FF11, I'm basically thinking of that era. And I, I'm not really too interested in how the game plays now, because it is it is a different game. Um, so for me, private servers are the way to go, specifically ones that stick to the old school. Um, you know, re retail is just not really, not really for me. <laughs> um, and it's also just that I, I kind of feel like, I don't know, Square Enix doesn't... I, I get the feeling that Square Enix doesn't quite really respect the players that are left on retail. <laughs> I don't know. It, it seems to be in a weird place of just maintenance. But like I said, I have a, I have a different approach. A different approach. I mean, hey, if you still like retail, great. Um, it's just, yeah, I, I don't know. I, let me put it like this. There's a reason that I stopped playing FF11 back in the day, right? Which I, I think I stopped playing like around Treasures of Otter again. Uh, maybe a little after. Like, I never got the expansion, but I think I just quit around that time. Uh, but, you know, there's a reason for that. The game was changing and I didn't really like it. <laughs> you know, and that's on me. <laughs> but that's why whenever I play the game now, I, I want to play that kind of very familiar old school. You know, that's that's what I want to play. With some changes. I'm, I'm open to changes. Like, it, it's not that the game changed. It's that um, I, I didn't like the direction of the change. But, you know, private servers like Horizon, they're changing it. But trying to kind of stick to the original vibe, I'm down for that. Because honestly, there is a lot of stuff that was just frustrating with the game, so... Yeah, I'm down for changing some things. Yeah, I, I mean, like, I get that. Uh, the, the thing is, with retail, they want you to play, like... 
Yeah, you know, they, they want you to... Like, that's why they have trusts and everything. They want you to just be able to play the game. And I will totally admit, that is one of the flaws of classic FF11, but it's also one of its strengths. Um, like, the way that the world is very connected in FF11, in, in the old school. Uh, just, just how everything... I don't know, like, everything players do, whether it's partying up or it's combat or, or whatever, uh, everything feels really connected. Like, you know, you need other players in some capacity, and I kind of like that. That's, uh, you know, I, I like it. At the same time, I mean, as you can see, I'm playing as a Beastmaster, right? <laughs> so, you know, I'm, I'm playing as the solo class. Yeah, I, I, that's what I always hated back in the day. Like, I, uh, I... Actually, that is one of the reasons that I quit, was that, yeah, like, I, at a certain point, my gameplay was like, I would log in, and I'd have my party flag up for, like, five hours, and then by the time I was passing out, um, it's like, hey, wanna join a party? <laughs> yeah, that, that wasn't great. That was not great. But I, I think a lot of that was just how we played the game back then. Like, okay. Oh, is, is that attacking me? Oh, it is! Oh! Oh, yeah, that one's an easy pr Okay, I, I, uh... Oh, boy, I get to have a fight now. Big scissors! But, uh, I think that part of... Part of that problem was just how we play the game. So, like, on Horizon, like, I play as a Beastmaster, but also the way that Beastmaster works on this server, A, it's really good at soloing, but B, you can sub-job it to other jobs, and you can charm just as good as, as a full Beastmaster. So, if you want to be like a bard or a white mage or whatever, but you want to, you know, you have your party flag up, but you want to solo too, you can do that. It's obviously not going to be as good as partying, but no, you can get shit done, you can level up, you can, you know, do your quests, whatever, you get things done. But it would be preferable to do it in a party, and I, to me, that's kind of ideal. Like, to me, that is... That's sort of a compromise sweet spot that I'm okay with. Like, I don't, I don't want a full party of NPCs, I don't want to be able to just do all the content whenever I feel like, but but I want to be able to, you know, go out and kill things for EXP or loot or whatever and, and not have to have a full party of six players to do that. And I, I think the, the changes that Horizon XI has made, I think it's a good compromise for people like me that, yeah, I want the old school, but I will fully admit, old school FF11 is more punishing than it needs to be. It's more restrictive than it needs to be. But retail's not really for me either, so... I, I kind of think this is a good compromise. It's a, it's a compromise I can accept. I, I also do like how they kind of bumped up the regen rates when you heal. <laughs> like, look, I, I like playing mage classes, I do. But I have to admit, playing a mage in classic FF11 was very rough. And it was mostly because you would be spending almost all your time just sitting down meditating. That wasn't really very fun. So bumping that rest rate up, that, that really goes a long way for me. But I don't know, I, like, no matter what version of FF11, you know, anyone wants to play, I think, I think the main thing is, and it's, it's maybe the, the glorious thing about Final Fantasy XI, I think over the years, this game means a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Like, I, I think everyone, everyone I've encountered has their own opinion of what was the golden age of FF11. Everybody has their own opinion of what FF11 is all about. Uh, <laughs> you ask a hundred different people, and they'll have a hundred different answers as to, like, what is FF11 and why, why should you play it, right? 
so I think I think between retail and the many private servers that you know they all kind of have their own spin on the game they run the game at different eras of time I think that's just more choice right that's just it's player choice more more choice for more players to play the game the way they want to play it that said I think if Square Enix I think if they did like a like a progression server or something if they uh, like, I think if Square Enix launched a FF11 Classic server, I do think people would probably be all over that. I I mean, if they, if they also fixed the Play Online launcher so that it actually works on a modern PC, and look, at least for me, the thing just doesn't work at all. And I play a lot of very old games that I have to do trickery to make them run. I couldn't get the Play Online launcher to run. But if they did those things, I I think a lot more people might flock to retail. But again, just me. Just me. So for me, ultimately, uh, this is the era of the game I like. That's what I'm going to play. But I don't know. I For me, I... I never got that far with FF11. Like, I think level 50-ish. I usually kind of drop off the game at 50. And here I am at level 50. So it's about that time. But, um... I, I think, really... I just have fun playing the game. I, I have fun running around Bastok. Hearing that jaunty tune, which has been remixed on this server. And I, I'm gonna be honest, I like the remixes. I like the remixes better than the original. Maybe that's just because I've heard the original music so goddamn much, but I appreciate the remix. <laughs> but yeah, I, I have fun just wandering around the stock, killing rabbits in the Ronfar, getting murdered by goblins in, in, in Valkyrm Dunes. It's those kind of nostalgic moments, right? That's what I like about FF11. And I always will. That, uh, that first time you get a character over level 20, and you make the perilous journey to Juno to get your Chocobo license. Your first advanced job. Oh, well, uh, getting uh, the sub-job items so that you can, you know, you can have a sub-job. That's, like, these kind of little, like, these little landmarks of the game that are just really nostalgic for me. I... That's what it's about to me. And I guess really that experience you can kind of get anywhere. I, I, I acknowledge that. <laughs> Alright, does my Moogle have anything else for sale? Or not for sale, but did anything I was selling sell and... No. I can dream, right? I can dream of Gil. I can dream of one day having Gil. I mean, to be fair, I do have 270k, but the, the only reason I have that much Gil is because I'm wearing level 11 armor. <laughs> I'm a Beastmaster. I literally can fight naked, and it, I'm more or less as effective. <laughs> That's another reason I play as Beastmaster. I'm, I've never really been good at making Gil in this game. And that is one of the things I want to work on on Horizon XI. I, like, I never did trade skills or anything before, but now I'm, I am leveling up my trade skills a little bit. I'm doing fishing. I, like, it always mesmerizes me how some players in this game have like billions of gil or whatever, and I always, I don't understand it. And it's not always the ones that camp rare spawns, it's, uh, it's often just people who craft a lot or fish a lot, and you know what? I want some of that, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get my, get my trade skills up. Okay, back to Port Bastok. And then I think we have to go to Norg. That should be easy. I, my home point is in Juno, so I can just use my instant warp scroll, head right on over there. Getting to Norg, that's just a matter of hopping on the airship to Kazam.
and then hopping on a chocobo and just riding it straight into the cave that leads to Nord. Oh wait, I wonder, do we- hold up, do- do we have the map? Do we have a map for, uh, You Got Grotto? I- I think that's the one? Or it's- God, I forget what it's called exactly. So we have Yatunga Jungle, Kazam. Uh, do we have a Norg map? I do not. That could be an issue. <laughs> that- that may- that may be a little bit of an issue. Uh, it's not that big of an issue. We can... We can navigate by the stars, aka uh, using a walkthrough. You know, use a wiki. <laughs> I kind of remember the route to Nord. You, you, once you get to a tunnel, you kind of just hug the northern wall in the tunnel, and that'll take you to Nord eventually. <laughs> That's what I remember. But I, yeah, I'll pop open a wiki just to, just to be extra sure. Okay, so, gotta talk to Insetsu again. And I've been on this, uh, been on this ninja quest for over an hour, <laughs> and we are... We're only really halfway there. Some strangely shaped coral. I am grateful for your help, but there is one problem. Kagetora. Kagetora, I... Look, pronunciation's gonna fail me. So he told me that if I wanted my item back, I would need to go to Norg and get it myself. As much as I would like to go, I cannot. I hate to ask you again after all the trouble you have gone through, but would it be too much to ask you to take that strangely shaped coral to Ryoma in Norg? I would be in your debt. Alright, so now... I'm gonna double check it, but now I think we've gotta go to Norg. Yeah, so now we have to go to Norg, and that's through Sea Serpent Grotto. Okay. So the thing is, the thing is, we have to go to Norg, right? But then also, we have to come back. We, we've got to come back here. So I'm thinking, okay, what's the what's the best way? How, how do we play this? And I'm I'm thinking we keep our bind point in in Juno. We can warp over to Gustaberg. That'll get us close to here. I don't have access to the airships between nations yet, so the outpost teleport's kind of the way to go for that. Alright, so let's warp back to Juno. So uh, here's a thought as we're just doing this. So I am I am over an hour in and all I've been doing is the ninja quest. And I'd say I'm maybe halfway through it, right? Depends how long it takes me to get through the jungle, but um, I wonder how long does it take to unlock ninja in Final Fantasy 14? I'm pretty sure it doesn't take this long pretty sure <laughs> And that's not a that's not a diss on any game. It's just It's a thought that in this game it takes uh, It takes a long time to really do anything <laughs> It's a process. Like, the whole... The best way I can sum up FF11 is that the whole game is a process. A very slow, lengthy process. Okay, so, Kazam, that's where we need to get to. So, the last airship dock on the left. And Juno's pretty empty this morning. At least the port is, anyway. I, I, I think people tend to congregate in Lower and Upper Juno. Like, I think that's where most people hang out on this server. <laughs> I wonder, how many people are on the server right now? I, I play in very off hours. 
Uh, I'll check that, hold up. I'll check that once I get to the airship dock, because if the airship is there, I don't want to miss it. I do have extraordinary luck, though. Like, usually, when I open the doors to go to the airship dock, the airship is just leaving. Let's, let's see if that holds. Oh, hey, people fishing down here. Okay, the flight for Kazan is arriving, like, right now. Like, right now. <laughs> yeah, oh boy, perfect. Well, for once, I had good time. Very nice. Alright. Also, now that I have time to sit, let's see, what is this accursed burn link? Let's let's take a quick look. Also, sorry I'm a little nasally. I again I've been outside today and having allergies is real fun. What is what? <laughs> is is this like is, is this AI generated pizza restaurant? <laughs> I think reality is breaking. I, I think it's breaking down. The, the walls are coming down. <laughs> yeah, I love crafty and horror Domino's pizza. That's, uh, that's what I'll call that work of art. So, okay, while we're just sitting here... Uh, search area uh, all areas so how many people are online right now 992 that's not bad again I play I play you know I play during EU hours which is not popular for this server but still 992 uh, people I'm often there's well over a thousand when I'm playing I mean often when I'm playing like towards when it's later at night and you're starting to border into U.S. hours, uh, there's usually well over 2,000 people. I think if I actually manage to play during U.S. hours, uh, there's quite a lot more. <laughs> but I... Look, most private servers that I play on, they tend to only have, like you know, three or four hundred people at peak hours, so this server's doing great. <laughs> I, I am curious how it compares to retail in terms of like, and, and what I mean is people that are actually playing the game in the world and not just like sitting AFK or uh, just doing end game content, right? Because most of the people playing this, uh, the vast majority are not, they are not AFK and they are not doing endgame either. They're just, they're just in the world playing the game, right? You'll just see them all over the place. You'll, you'll see them traveling around, fishing, doing whatever. And uh, I like to see that. Like, I really like to see the game world being very populated and active. Feels good. <laughs> also, Burn, I have, um, I, I've spent way too much time looking at, like, AI-generated images of, um, normal things, but, like, but it's, it's just, like, there's a horrible, uh, Lovecraftian abomination. It's, uh, it's getting in my head. Oh, Vexus, we're, uh, we're going to Kazam, the, uh, the Elshimo Island. I'm, I'm still on the ninja quest. I, I have to deliver something to, uh, to Norg, 
and then I have to go back to Bastok. <laughs> but then I'll be a ninja! Well, I'll be a level 1 ninja, then I have to level it up. <laughs> oh god, only 6 to 7 years. Only. <laughs> See, I remember a time when games, you know, look, look, g de developer could pound a game out in a couple months, all right? <laughs> Two months in the basement, you got yourself a new game. <laughs> but now, I think nowadays, if you say a game is like a, a yearly installment, uh, that just makes people panic because they know it's going to be bad. <laughs> But like back in the day, if you said, oh, we're, we're making one game a year, it'd be like, whoa, what, what takes so long? This must be a great game if it takes a whole year to make. <laughs> oh, hey, look, there's a, there's the Windurst tree over there. Also, very, uh, very snappy-dressed Taru right there. I, I want the hat. I want that hat. Yeah, see, this is another reason why I like indie games more these days, because, like, they generally aren't really very focused on the, the graphic polish, but that means they can just make the game. And so they can get it out a lot faster. <laughs> I kind of prefer that, honestly. Although, what I've really gotten into in recent years is uh, well, stuff kind of like this, where you take an, you know, you take an old game and, um, you know, you, you kind of, you polish it up, you, you edit it, you know, you do your things to it, or like Turtle Wow, where they just make their own World of Warcraft expansions, but or, or just like heavily modding. It. Daggerfall Unity. God, I love Daggerfall Unity. But I, I've kind of gotten into the scene of taking very old games and then, like, the community will just sort of reinvent it and then make their own expansions and shit and just go nuts with it. Like, that's kind of... I find that fascinating for multiple reasons. And that's, that's kind of where my interest has been with games lately. I mean, there, there are plenty of cartoony fantasy games, or just games that don't use much graphics. I, again, the, the indie scene is good for games. It, it's really just AAA gaming that's getting a little weird in, in recent years. But uh, there, there's, there's little titles out there still that are really good. I mean, to be fair, a lot of the remakes that have come out are pretty good. Yeah, that Dead Space remake, that RE4 remake. <clears throat> well, I mean, really all the Resident Evil remakes. I, I got no problem with remakes as long as they're good. But I think more so than, like, game industry stuff, I, I find it fascinating when the community is the one kind of revamping the game. You know, and the community is reimagining the game and making it their own thing. That's that's kind of why I really like private servers for MMOs. Like, yeah, I like free games too, but it's it's really that uh, it's fascinating to see what the community basically will do with a game when they're just sort of allowed to go nuts with it and change it as they like and and kind of reinvent it. And, and to do that free of uh, the constraints of, like, you know, development time or monetization plans or, or whatever. It, it's always interesting to see how that comes out. Like, Daggerfall Unity, there's some great stuff with that. Like, that game has... It, it's a whole new experience now. Like, you... Like, literally, 
you could just slap all those mods on there and re-release Daggerfall as like, look, hey, it's Elder Scrolls 6. And people would buy it. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know, a lot of fan-made projects take a long time, but it, it just depends on that. Like, it, it depends on how easy to modify the game is, like how easy it is to make assets and things for the game. This is often, like, this is often the advantage of taking an older game and just working with it. Because, well, let's take something like Daggerfall, right? Like, if you want to make content for Daggerfall, I mean, as far as assets go, uh, if you stay in the style of the game, it's basically just 2D pixel graphics for the non, you know, the non-environmental stuff. And then the environment is just very simple 3D models, so... Like, one guy can make whole new assets for the game very quickly. And so then it's just a matter of actually scripting it and making it work, right? Um, I, I think making your own content for, like, a modern game with shiny graphics, that would be tricky. That would be very time-consuming and, you know, cost a lot of money, but I, I think it's why old games are good for this, because they're easy to work with. Like, it's the reason why Daggerfall... Like, the Daggerfall modding scene is moving incredibly quickly, because it's so easy to just whip up assets for it, right? But then you look at something like, I don't know, the Skyrim modding scene, and they have a lot of grand ideas, they really do. Uh, but because if they want it to fit into Skyrim, that's going to be a lot of work to kind of match that level of quality. So things move incredibly slow. But Daggerfall, like, I mean, you, you look at Daggerfall, like, it, you know, one afternoon you can make some new assets for that. Alright. Uh, let's see, let's go ahead and rent our chicken. Rent that chicken. Uh, oh, wait, wait, before I do that... So, I don't, I don't think I have a map of Sea Serpent Grotto. I, I don't think I do. Let me check my maps and see. So, Elshimo Lowland. Yeah, I have Kazam and I have Yatunga Jungle. So, here's the question, which I will refer to a wiki. Uh, FF11, classic. Sea Serpent Grotto map. So where do you get the map for Sea Serpent Grotto? Wait. Wait, no. Hold up, that can't be right. That can't be right. Oh, this is gonna be real fun. So the map of Sea Serpent Grotto comes from... It, it comes from... <laughs> treasure chess in in Sea Serpent's grotto, apparently. Oh, that's gonna be real fun. Okay. So I think we're gonna have to reference a map of Sea Serpent Grotto. Uh, let me just let me just pop a map up real quick. Okay, okay. It's pretty simple to get to Norg. I Yeah, I shouldn't even need a map for this. Okay, I got it. I got it. But how great is that? In order to get a map of Norg, or like a map of Sea Serpent Grotto, you have to explore Sea Serpent Grotto with no map and find a treasure chest. Well, you need to find the key and then you need to unlock a treasure chest. How, how great is that? How great is that? Oh, uh, okay. So I'm not sure the exact route to, to get in here. Yeah, I'm not exactly sure. I I usually go like south through here and uh, and then I come out at the outpost. Yeah, I usually I like, go south through the jungle, come out at the outpost, and then go west. That's usually how I do it. I'm I'm not sure the exact route, but uh, it's not too complicated. We'll, we might hit some dead ends, but we'll get there eventually. Also, it's double water in the, in the jungle, so I guess there'll be some water elementals out and about. N not really much need to kill water elementals. Uh, water crystals are a dime a dozen. Like, every newbie killing... 
I don't know, what, what drops water? Crabs. Every newbie killing crabs. That's just water crystals right there. I mean, why wouldn't it be? Like, like everything is well made in this game. It's, like, FF11 is an incredibly well made game. There's a reason they just imported a lot of these assets for FF14. Like, they, they were so good, they didn't feel the need to redo them. Uh, hold up, let me check my map. Uh, so I think... I think going west and then south here? I think that'll get me to where... Oh yeah, also, hold up. Yeah, these, uh, these Oppo Oppos? I am very sure that is... That model is just in FF14. Like, I'm pretty sure. Look, Square Enix. They, they uh... <laughs> They feel no shame with reusing good assets, okay? Oh, hold up, hold up. Okay, so we go east, then south. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing wrong with the, the hares and, um, and the earthworms. I mean, honestly, the tunnel worms. Like, if you actually look at the tunnel worms, I mean, they're... The way that they animate is, is actually incredibly smooth. <laughs> like, more so than I would expect, like, from a PlayStation 2 game, right? There, there's a lot of surprisingly good animation in this game. Like, models, animation, both of them. There's, there's a lot of very surprisingly amazing stuff in here. Ways. This is why I like to have a map. Okay, so... Keep going south, I... I'm either gonna get to where I need to go if I keep going south, or I need to back up, go east, and then south. We'll see how this plays out. But I think this opens up to the outpost, right? I think FF11, it it has a very iconic and very Final Fantasy look to it. <laughs> okay, so here's the outpost. This is where we need to be. Oh, yeah, look at that, there's your your overgrown rose. It's it's not quite a, a Marlboro or a Marlboro or <laughs> not the cigarette, but the other thing. It's it's a not quite that. Look, there's someone just fishing over here. Yeah, so we need to get down there, and there's a, a passage behind the waterfall. Can I just jump down? No. Okay, so we fall down a hole. And then we should just be able to, like... Yeah, there we go. You fall down a hole, and then you pop out here. Oh yeah, new beast man type. Sahagans. Which, uh, Sahagans are in Final Fantasy XIV as well, although they, uh, they went with a different model for the FF14 Sahagans. I think both look okay, but I, I think these Sahagans, I think they look much more fish-like. Like, the ones in FF14, they're more humanoid, I think. Whereas these, like, these literally look like... Like, these look like fish that grew arms and legs. And honestly, I kind of like that look. I kind of like that. Alright, so... Secret waterfall entrance. <laughs> I mean, is it really a secret? No, not, not really. Oh, hey, look. Oh my god, look at this. There's two people here fishing. Maybe three people? Like, there's a... Yeah, there's like three people just fishing under the waterfall here. 
This will be some good stuff. The catching El Shimo nukes. There's something really fun about just, like, you're exploring and you just see people fishing everywhere. <laughs> I don't know, it makes me feel all warm inside. Very wholesome. Sea Serpent Grotto. Also, uh, Sea Serpent Grotto, as far as I remember, I don't think this map had music in the game originally. So, here's some of that new music in there. Oh yeah, I have no map. Yeah. I don't think I'll need a map to navigate here, but we'll see about that. So, the enemies in here detect by... yeah, they all detect by sound. So, get your sneak on, and let's do it. Time to find Norg. So I, I think as long as I hug the northern wall of this cave, I should be okay. Shouldn't get too lost. It's uh, it's fairly quick to get to Norg. But it is hidden! Uh, it, it is actually... The entrance to Norg is a, a little tiny bit of a secret, kind of. I like this soundtrack. Horizon did a good job. Okay, so the entrance to Norg is right here. All these royal leeches. I don't know if they're hostile or not. Yeah, so it's a... It's kind of sort of a secret entrance. You just... I mean... It clearly looks like a door, but it does kind of blend into the cave. Hmm. Oh, these gas, they're so they're like level 38. Uh, honestly, this place would be great for just EXPing. Like, <laughs> if if I ever feel like just soloing some, uh, yeah, killing shit outside an orb, it works. Good idea. Okay, so we're coming up on the entrance to Norg now. The pirate slash ninja town. Pirates and ninjas living together. Also, this tune. want to sneak around a castle. Or actually, okay, you know what this part of the song sounds like? It, for, for some reason, it makes me directly recall sneaking around Viper Manor in Chrono Cross. <laughs> Look, I don't know why. I don't know why. But I'm getting Viper Manor vibes. And yeah, yeah, like the like all the all the tracks they've added on Horizon, they're they, I think they're good and fitting. Okay, so we're uh, we're looking for a guy here. We're looking for someone. I think Ryoma. I think he's the guy. Setsu asked you to bring this strangely shaped coral. Hasn't changed a bit, has he? Always was a weak, a weak little worm. If I saw his face, I would smack him up so hard. <laughs> well, at least he's finally learning the value of, his, of this blade. 
Yomi can now rest in peace. Oh, and let me tell you, I'm not doing this for Hensetsu. I only care about Yomi's daughters. So we obtained key item, seal the dagger. Also, I just realized that I forgot something. You know what I forgot? I forgot to buy an instant warp scroll. So I can't instant warp out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but I think there's a no map, no map. I, I'm pretty sure there's a nomad Moogle somewhere around here that'll, uh, you know, he'll help me out. Well, I, I take a quick look around. Look at this. This scene right here. This uh, this misty cave where the the pirate ships land. This, Hey, this looks pretty nice. This is, um... You know, even though it's basically just a big cave, uh, I think it looks cool. I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah, let's go and find a nomad Moogle. I I don't have a map of this place. Okay, I, I know that there's sections of this cave. Here we go. And I know there's a nomad Moogle in one of the other sections of the cave. So, we're gonna do the old, uh, the old D3. The, uh, the old death warp. Okay, change jobs. So change my main job to, I don't know, warrior. Alright, so that's a job I can die on and it's, uh, it's not a problem. Still no monies. Oh hey, it's Clunk! He's in my guild! Hold up. Look, whenever you see a fellow Link Shell mate, you gotta you gotta salute him. Okay, so yeah, we're just gonna take the Death Warp out of here, and um, that'll take me back to Juno, and then we have to go back to the stock. But I. I think then I'll be a ninja. Let, let me just double check the wiki real quick. So okay, we went to Norg, talked to Ryoma, got the dagger. So now we need to return to Ensetsu. And yeah, that'll uh, that'll finish off the quest. Now that's not the only quest we have to do in Norg. So the thing is, if we really want to be a ninja, at a certain point I will have to do the 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 quest to actually get your ninja magic. Like, it, it's not enough to just be a ninja. Uh, you, you have to unlock the spells. Like, you have to... You have to do quests to get the good spells. But for right now... Right now, all I'm worried about is... is getting the class unlocked. That's... That's my concern in the moment. So, Mog House, let's go ahead and change job back to level 50 Beastmaster. Okay. Oh, my, my glamour. My glamour. Hold up. Hold up. Look, fashion is everything. There we go. Got the, got the proper look back. Fashion quest is very, very real, I will have you know. Okay, let's exit out to... Well, hold up, I guess I want my, uh... I want that instant warp scroll, just...
convenience. But then again, I just had a thought. It might pay off to, uh... I mean, if I'm gonna level up Ninja, it might pay off to just stay in Bastok. Eh, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So first things first, I want to get my instant warp scroll. I don't, I don't like to be without one. It is purely a convenience thing. I, you know, I'll admit it, right? I don't need to have it. But having an instant warp scroll, it, it makes me feel better to know that I can always just teleport back to my home point whenever, wherever, for whatever reason. It costs 750 conquest points, but I take that hit. Okay, so now we go to the teleport goblin. Also, as I've, uh, you know, I've hit 50 here with Beastmaster, and I've been working on, like, the trade skills and all that, I have had a thought, which is, I may actually want to level Thief up to 50. Like, I don't, I don't think I want to take Thief all the way, but at least to 50 so that I have Treasure Hunter 2, so that I can, like, I can more easily farm the, the lower level materials. Because, for crafting purposes, uh, you need a lot of things. Turns out, materials, you need lots of them. <laughs> like, I mean a lot of them. So, uh, yeah. Having Treasure Hunter 2 might really help out with that, but... I don't know. It's, it's not necessary, you don't, you don't need it. Uh, Treasure Hunter 1 is, is more than adequate for, you know most purposes in the game. But I think I might want to at least level up uh, Thief to... Like, I don't know, maybe level 37 so that it's a good sub-job, because I do... I do use Thief as a sub-job to Beastmaster. Not because it's good, but because it gives me Treasure Hunter. Like, when I'm out just leveling up, I like to fight with Treasure Hunter on so that I get more loot, right? <laughs> so that leveling isn't quite as expensive. So it might be, you know, if I'm gonna do that a lot, it might be a good idea to actually have Thief leveled up as a sub-job, so that I can, you know, I, I can... Like, I can get more benefit from it, I can get better stats, all that good stuff. But I think ultimately what I have learned about sub-jobs in FF11 is that really you want to have as many of them as possible. Like, for any given class, there's usually multiple good sub-jobs that, depending on the situation, you will want to have. Like, as a red mage, sometimes you'll want ninja as a sub-job. Either for the you know, for the Utsa Semi Ichi spell, uh, or just so you can dual wield. You know, there's reasons. But then other times you might want Black Mage as your sub because you need more int, you need more crowd control, etc. Those AoE spells. And then sometimes you need White Mage as a sub because you're gonna be the healer for the group, so you wanna be able to, you know, cure status afflictions. That good stuff. So, for most classes, there's a lot of sub-jobs to level up. And it's it's one of those things where I both... You know, it's a love-hate thing, right? I, I like that, okay, yeah, I gotta work for it if I want it. I hate that, okay, I gotta work for it if I want it. <laughs> Leveling up a job that you have absolutely no interest in, just to use it as a sub-job. And, you know, it's not, it's not great, but it serves a purpose.
Alright, so, just have to get to the stock, and we talk to Insetsu, that should complete the quest, and we'll, we'll be a ninja. And then I have to level ninja up. Which I'd say, I, I mean, ninja is, like, that's a sub-job that I will definitely use. And depending on the situation, I'll, I'll use that with a lot of different jobs. It's good for Beastmaster, it's good for Thief, it's good for Red Mage. I mean, hell, it's even good for Black Mage because dual wielding wands is kind of nice for the int. But let me see, Warrior. Warrior slash Ninja is a very potent combo. Like, the, like almost every class can go slash Ninja and it adds quite a bit of utility to it. Like, there, there's only a few classes that don't get some kind of benefit. I think, I think a lot of it is really just the dual wheel. Like, dual wielding, um, if you're using a one-handed weapon, it increases your damage by quite a bit to dual wield. Like, if you don't need to use a shield, and if you're not tanking, you don't need to use a shield. So for any class that one-handed wields weapons, it's basically doubling up your damage and the stats on your weapon, too. Like, even Ranger, Ranger Ninja is a pretty good combo. Even though Ranger is not a melee class, there are like, there are multiple, uh, most of them are knives, but there, there's multiple melee weapons that are one-handed that boost your ranged accuracy and or damage. Or they boost stats that affect that, and if you can dual wield that, you're doubling up the bonuses. So, yeah, there's, there's, <laughs> like, it's honestly a little bit of a problem, actually, that Ninja... Like, Ninja is so versatile as a sub-job, it's honestly kind of too good. <laughs> like, I, I legit think it's maybe too much. Maybe, maybe too good. Also, I, I could go into town, or I could go up through North Gustaburg. Let me think, it's... I mean, at this point, we're right next to the entrance to town. We're, we're right here. And I do have the back alleys unlocked, so if I go to the residential district, I can just pop out in the port. It doesn't really matter too much which direction I go into town. forward to returning to level 1 and uh, getting to getting the experience all over again that's like look you're never gonna escape the noob zone in, in Final Fantasy 11 this is something that I think everyone has to come to terms with when they play this game for a long time you will never escape the noob zone Like, until you max out every single class, you're gonna be coming back to the newbie zone and killing level 1 worms and rabbits and bees or whatever else is outside of your newbie zone. You're gonna come back. They always come back. But here, one thing I can do, I, I think for right now, we're, we don't need to fight anything as a Beastmaster, and I would like to actually work on that crafting after we wrap up the ninja quest, once we get that unlocked. I would actually like to then maybe do some crafting. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I want to do my nation quest, too. I want to do the Primivian stuff. There's a lot of content I would love to do, but 
I'm gonna say this, we're about two hours into the stream, and that two hours has been nothing but unlocking Ninja. That's it. That's all we've been doing. So again, I, uh, I, I bring it up. We're about two hours in, and we're not a ninja yet. But uh, in, in Final Fantasy XIV, how long does it take to unlock... Well, you don't start as a ninja in that, because the way it works, like, you, you start as, like, a, a rogue, right? How long does it take to unlock rogue? I'm fairly certain that you literally just go to the rogue trainer and say, I wish to be a rogue, and boom. You get your level one quest timed. Time to be a rogue. But you know what? That doesn't feel very satisfying, now does it? But going on a going on a globe trotting two hour long quest to unlock ninja, I mean look, I gotta be honest. When I unlock that ninja, it's it's gonna feel good. I'm gonna feel like I accomplished something. <laughs> and also, I can flaunt it over my fellow players that have not yet unlocked Ninja. Look, look, I, I think we all know that was... There is a little bit of that in Final Fantasy XI. It always, always was. Like, hey, I unlocked this super radical class that was... You know, it took me forever. And you have not. And so I'm better than you. The, look, there, there was always just a little bit of that in FF11. Can't escape it. Alright, Insetsu. I did the thing. Sorry, but your ninja is in another castle. <laughs> no. <clears throat> All right, I cannot express in words the gratitude I feel towards your kindness. I sold this to help support my family, but then I realized that my daughter needed it once more. Father, what is that? You, you bought another sword for Ayame, didn't you? It's just not fair. Would you stop going on about that? I have never purchased a weapon for your sister. Every katana she owns was acquired without my or anyone else's help. Like, like she has multiple katanas? That's a keeper right there. Then, w what is that for? I was going to wait, but I guess you're old enough to know. The dark secret. This dagger was your mother's. Oh, wow. They, they, they actually bothered to animate it. I, th I thought they were just gonna, like, pantomime it. <laughs> you mean, this old thing was... Mom's. Yes, its real name is a Shinobi Katana. Mom was a ninja? Long ago, Yomi, your mother, and I lived in Norg. Norg is a haven for the arts of the Far East. I was just a lowly crew member on a pirate ship. Your mother, on the other hand, was a master of ninjutsu, almost as strong as she was beautiful. And that's probably why she found comfort in a normal, boring man like me. Basic Human Phase 3 When we found that your mother was carrying your sister, we left Norg and traveled here in search of a more simple life. It was at that time that your mother told me this was proud of the road she had taken, and it was that very road that led her to her new life. Oh, hey, look, Ayame's just outside the door. The hardships that she had to endure made her into the strong mother that she was. Perhaps at that time, she realized that she did not have much longer in this world. But she fought for ten long years until she exchanged her life for the life of our second daughter. You, Katie. But... I never wanted you or your sister to take up the katana. When your sister said she wanted to travel to Nora to study the way of the samurai, of course I was against it. However, if it was to keep her from becoming a ninja... I, I love this logic. It's 
It's like, no, she can't see. She will not learn the way of the blade. She won't be a ninja, but a samurai. No, that's fine. That's A-OK. -okay. Katie, each day, you remind me more and more of your mother. I remind you of mom? And that's why I have been so protective of you. But maybe I was wrong. Unlike most fighters, ninjas do not wave their swords. They lurk in the shadows and stalk their enemies. One must have the highest level of patience and concentration to draw that blade. Your mother, your mother left this blade sheathed to remind her of that. And now, this blade will be passed on to you. The road you travel is for you to decide. But do not forget the message that remains in your mother's katana. Mom, that 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 blade is your mother now. I thank you so much for your help in bringing the blade back to my home. I do not have much to offer you, but take this scroll detailing the secrets of the ninja as a token of my appreciation. It was my wife's. No, Katie won't be needing it. All she really needed was her mother's strong will and spirit. If she wishes to walk the path Yomi chose, it will be her decision. But I have the feeling she will be traveling to Norg soon to find that path. Alright, I can now become a ninja. I, I have... <laughs> I, I can Naruto run now. Alright. But yeah, that's a, that was a lot of... Uh, <laughs> A lot of story there. A lot of story going on. But yeah, I'm a ninja now. Or, well, you know, I can be a ninja. So, awesome. I don't think there's anything else I need in the stock right now. I, I guess I could unlock Samurai, too, but I'm not really... Not, not really in the mood to level that up. <laughs> I, I'm kind of just taking things one class at a time. Alright, one class at a time, or as needed. Alright, so, let's go ahead and use our instant warp scroll. Get on the fuck out of here. Okay, back in Juno. So let's see, I guess, I guess, I wanted to, I wanted to at least start my next nation quest, like I, I wanted to start that. Uh, I can do that back in, back in Sandoria. So in order to get back to Sandoria uh, comfortably and quickly, the best way to do that from here is to teleport to an outpost that I have access to that is under Sandorian control right now. And once we teleport there, we can talk to the NPC and they can warp me back to my hometown. So it's a, it's a two-step process, but as long as Sandoria controls the outpost, it's a fairly inexpensive process. So, Durfland is a... it's a good choice. Alright, so that puts me in the marshes. Right next to a carnivorous crawler. Oh hey, I can, uh, I can get Signet here too. I'm, I'm gonna be out in the newbie zone making use of that again pretty soon. Alright, but what I want to do is... Yeah, teleport me back to town with Gil. And it's a very minimal cost, and gets me right back to Sandoria. The triumphant sound of Sandy Oreo. Hmm. Alright, 
right, so like always, I use my conquest points, which, yeah, I know I should really be a little more careful with my conquest points, but the convenience of, of instant warping is too strong. Okay, let's see what we got for nation quests. Okay, so I've done Smash the Orcish Scouts, I've done Bat Hunt, Save the Children, the Davoy... Wait, I... Did I do the Davoy report? Infiltrate Davoy. I... Okay, so I... I'm guessing that Infiltrate Davoy is the quest, but I... I should really check... Before you take any mission in this game, because you can't walk it back, uh, it, it is a good idea to make sure that that is in fact actually the quest that you need to do. Uh, you don't you don't want to take quests that you don't actually need to do. So let's do infiltrate Davoy. So this is the Sandoria 3-1 mission. Hmm. So wait, this is the this is the three one mission. Uh, so I'm looking at a list. Okay, so so two two was the Davoy report. Two three was Journey Abroad. So three one is Infiltrate Davoy. So it it looks like uh, yeah, there's. There are three rank three missions, and it looks like we have to do them all. Oh yay. Oh yay. Well, this is fine. This is fine. Sometimes you can skip those uh, by, uh, by turning in crystals, but no. Nope. Not for this rank. Okay, infiltrate Davoy. Where is Davo? I'm trying to think. Where is that? <laughs> All right, you've come at uh, you've come just at the right time. Prince Trion wants a word with you. It seems he heard of you when you received your adventurer certificate. Head to the chamber of Prince Trion inside Chateau de Oregil as soon as you're presentable. Okay. Well, all right. I, I have a mission now. So I think for nation missions, I mean, you unlock more wardrobe slots and all that good stuff, but um, the main thing I want is I want the airship pass. <laughs> I really want that airship pass. But I, I think you have to get to rank 5. Like, if I remember right, I, I think the airship is rank 5. So it's gonna be a little while. We've got a ways to go. Also, apparently the suggested level for this quest is 35. So we're, we're over-leveled, so it shouldn't be a problem. As long as I don't have to do a level-synced boss fight, we're good. to the, the king or the prince or uh, uh, who, who runs this nation <laughs> okay not to help can, can I just like go in it's locked tight but do I, don't I have permission it says head to the chamber of prince Trion in, inside the chateau oh wait maybe maybe he has his own so, Prince Royal Trion, his room. Okay, so his room <laughs> is, in fact, over here down the hall. Gotcha. Oh, 
know. I, you know what? I, I've never actually explored the, the castle very much. Yeah, I've never really explored the castle a whole lot. So, hey, you know, good chance to look around. Also, I don't know why, but for some reason this castle... For some reason it reminds me of the, uh... The, the palace of, uh... What was it? Aqu Aquilos or something in, um... In Star Ocean 3. Also, PlayStation 2 game. Uh, it, it's a totally different theme and everything. It, it really doesn't have that much in common, but it's... It's something about how it's built and laid out. Maybe it's just the PlayStation 2 graphics, but... It really makes me think of that. Maybe all PlayStation 2 castles are just the same thing. Double us! Many are those who speak of your triumphs in the name of Sandoria. And much have I heard of your journeys abroad, and how you fought ni uh, nether beasts in the lair of the enemy. So the return of the Shadow Lord is at hand. Perhaps never will the Hand of Evil be banished from this world. But, always will the righteous stand up to face it. Am I not right, Doublus? The royal knights have but a single purpose, to exterminate the orcs who ravage our lands. We have sent scouts already to the orcish stronghold of Davoy. Or Davoy, I'm not sure. They are to report on the orcs' numbers, map the territory, and find their lines of supply. Once such knowledge is ours, we shall strike. But the scout's report has not yet arrived. What could this mean? What, the Temple Knights have also sent scouts to Davoy? On whose orders? I can't remember where Davoy is. <laughs> Piuge, I knew it! What madness has made him do this? We must not be dismayed, Doublus. I want you to head to Davoy straight away. Seek the Royal Knight Quimericond Chim and take the uh, take his Royal Knight's Davoy report. Now make haste. Okay, so it sounds like I won't necessarily have to do much fighting. I like that. That's good. So, do, do I have a map of Davoy? <laughs> where is Davoy? Like, I, I legit don't even know where that is. Is it in Norval? No. Uh, is it... Is it in the Ronfar? <laughs> it's all kind of... I have no idea where Davoy is. <laughs> like, I don't think I've ever been there. Well, I guess I'll have to find it, but, uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm a little, uh... I will admit I'm a little tired out from, from doing that long-ass ninja quest. So I think I'll put off doing any more long quests for, uh, for another time, but I, I got it started. I just, I guess I need to figure out how to get to Davoy. I would assume it's kind of close-ish to Sandoria? Like, that's how the Beastmen usually work. They, they're all kind of relative to the, uh, to the nation that they, uh, that they're fighting against. So, you know, the Yagudo, like, their stuff is all kind of in the Windurst area, and the Quadav are all in the general Bastok region, you know, like, getting progressively further away from it, but in that direction. So I would assume that Davoy would be... Uh, yeah, I would, I would assume that it would either be in, in Norvalin or Zolkheim, or something like that, I would think.
me take a look. I, I think on the region map I should be able to figure something out. Okay, so it's, it's not in that region. It is not in the Zolkheim region. So it's gotta be in Norvalen, right? Okay, yeah, it's it's in Norvalen. So I Hmm. So Norvalen is the equivalent to Durfland. Jugner Forest is the equivalent to Pashau Marsh. So I would assume I would assume that Davoy would be an offshoot from uh, from the forest. Okay, so here's a map of the forest. I, I'm not I'm not seeing Davoy like I'm not seeing an exit to Davoy, but oh wait, it's I'm thinking it's probably down here. It's it's probably yeah Davoy is probably this area right here. Uh, now one thing I do have. Uh, there is a region supply quest to go to this region and deliver the supplies. I could totally deliver the supplies and then go down to Davoy, like, while I'm at it, right? But, uh, again, not really in the mood to do it just right now. I did a long-ass quest. I don't, <laughs> don't want to be gophering around anymore. I want to settle down for a minute. So, the other thing that I wanted to do is I wanted to actually explore the crafting system of the game some more. <laughs> Which, the crafting system in this game, um, I'm only starting to get a handle on it. It's, it's very... I have to admit, the crafting system in this game is very intimidating. It's, uh, it's very intimidating and very difficult to kind of wrap your head around how it works and how, how you skill up and... And also, it's very expensive, too. But it does pay off. That's the thing. It it does pay off eventually. Eventually. So one thing I want to do is I want to check my auction house. So, yeah, I have a lot of things for sale that I'm not sure they will sell. Like, I'm, I'm selling gold lobsters, ogre eels. But I've been selling them for more than a day. And they're still not selling. So, yeah, that's not great. Okay, what have I got in my inventory? Threads. Oh, I got some Gygus's socks. Uh, right, I killed that giant. And he dropped his socks, so uh, is, is that worth anything? It's worth 1,440 gil. I'll take it. Of course, I'm gonna, gonna lowball it, but still. Okay, so, crafting. Crafting. So, I'm trying to level up a couple of things for crafting. <clears throat> so, I have uh, water and fairy apples. So, the water and fairy apples. That'll make apple juice. I can go all the way up to level 20 on that for cooking. And cooking, I want that to be my main trade skill. So. The main bottleneck for this craft is the fairy apples. Water crystals are only 300 gil per stack, so that's not, that's not hard. And they're really common. But the fairy apples are something that you can't always get your hands on. Right now we can uh, at the at the grocer here. They sell like the NPC just sells fairy apples for like I think it's like 40 gil something like that.
Yeah, they're 42 gil each, which is a very fair price. Like, that's... That's as good as it's gonna get. So, I'll buy a couple stacks of them. And, yeah. Crafting. So, let's select Water Crystal. And four fairy apples. And you put them together. And that's crafting. Now, the thing is, unlike most video games where you have some sort of recipe list or something to that effect, um, and oh yeah, we fail our first craft, th this is normal. My skill is, um, I'm like four levels under the recipe, so I'm gonna fail, but the important thing is that we get skill points. Yeah, and even when I fail, I am, in fact, leveling up. But yeah, this game doesn't have, like, a recipe list or anything like that. Uh, at, le at least not classically. So when you want to make something, you just sort of have to get a crystal, and combine items together, and hope something happens. Now, obviously... We live in the future, so we have wikis, and, you know, forums, wikis, discord, etc. We have lots of information available to us. God, I'm getting good skill points. I'm failing every single time, but, um, the, the skill ups are pretty good. But yeah, like, you know, you, you just open up a wiki, and you... Look, the wiki is your recipe list. That it, it's, it is what it is. But you do your research, you look up the items that you want to make, you get your materials, and you just combine them, and that's craft. And then you fail a lot. Well, hey, look, look, I succeeded that time. Cooking skill is up to level 17, and I made a bottle of apple juice. Now, since we're in town, I uh, I will actually try to sell some of these bottles of apple juice, but they're they're not really worth a whole lot. I can sell them to an NPC for about 80 gil each, you know, and that that kind of recoups a little bit of my cost. But uh, if I wanted to actually break even or even turn a profit, uh, what I would have to do is sell on the auction house. And apple juice isn't really in high demand. And it's not really worth a whole lot on the auction house, either. But, if you really care about Gil, then you want to do that, right? Me, I'm a beast master, so my equipment doesn't matter too much. Like, I'm not hurting for Gil. I'm just sitting on quite a lot of it that I'm, I'm just using for this. So, for me, I'll just be lazy and and NPC trash my stuff most of the time. It's fine. Now, I will say this, because I think I, I, uh, I and others have often made the comparison of crafting in this game compared to crafting in, like, FF14. And I will totally admit, the actual system for crafting, yes, is better in 14. Uh, however, at least to me, I have always felt that while maybe the system in this game is not very advanced, or, you know, it's, it's not a mini-game or anything, it's, it's, it just exists. I think that what you can actually do with crafting is far superior. And I just mean that in the sense that, in this game, everyone needs everything. Like, you know, everyone needs equipment, right? And unlike Final Fantasy XIV, you can't just go do a level-appropriate dungeon and be showered with all the equipment that you need. Or do a quest and just get all the equipment you need. It, it, the game doesn't shower you with gear. 
if you want a new sword, you pretty much gotta buy a new sword from a player. So... So anything you can buy in this game, it has a lot of inherent value. Uh, consumables even more so. Like this apple juice I'm making, it's not the best manager, but it will regenerate your MP. And any mage wants... Yeah, they want that regenerating MP, so it'll always have some value to someone, right? Always. Same goes for any food or drink that you make in this game. Same goes for potions. Like, these things are in demand because they're used at pretty much all levels of play. So, I... Yeah... This isn't the most exciting crafting system, but it's functional, and more importantly, it's useful. The things that you can make will be very useful to you, either personally or to sell. And they'll have a use to other players, more importantly. And that's kind of... that's the part of crafting and gathering that I... I kind of always felt like FF14 dropped the ball. Like, yeah, it's super fun, the system is good, can't deny that, but you can't really do a whole lot with it. Like, in, in FF14, I have all the crafts maxed out. It took me literally a day to do that, because it's easy. But then, okay, well, I can make anything. What do I make? Nothing is worth anything, because... Everybody can just be a crafter, so so most players just make their own stuff, so there isn't really a lot of demand for anything. I mean, yeah, here, crafting is... it is prohib... it's prohibitively confusing. It's expensive. It's time-consuming. There's some RNG involved. But because of that, when you actually level it up to the point where you can really make good things, your skills have value. I mean, hell, even before that. Like, even when you're just making newbie stuff, that has value here. And I like that. How many apples? Okay, I, uh, almost out of apples. Almost out of water crystals, too. I'm gonna have to buy more water crystals. Oh, look, we sat down and crafted at the same time. I, I love how there's just other people in here just, just crafting away. Ooh. The cooking 18. That means I can do the guild quest. So, yeah, you can do the guild quest to rank up so that you can continue leveling. You can do that every 8th level. So, like, level 8, level 18, 28, 38. And you have to do that if you want to level higher than, you know, the next tier. So right now, my cooking skill is actually capped at 20. I, I can't go any higher. I'll, uh... Oh, oh, my inventory is full. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah that's a little bit of a problem, isn't it? A little bit. Just, just a little bit. Okay. So the thing is, I have way too many... I have way too many apple juices. Like, I'm not gonna... Like, I know for a fact I am not going to be able to sell this on the auction house. Like, there are not enough people that need apple juice for me to, to unload all of this, right? But I will sell a little bit of it. Like, I'll take the time to sell, like, four bottles of apple juice. Also, buy some... buy... invest in fairy apples today. Okay. Got my fairy apples, I'll buy more crystals at the auction house. I also have other things I want to craft, too. So the other thing that I want to craft, so let's see, I have wind crystals and I have Yagudo necklaces, which I killed Yagudo and I stole their necklaces. 
and I can break that down. Oh, I have a Gygus necklace too. I didn't I didn't even realize that. I, I killed one giant and I I got all this stuff off of it. Okay, that's not worth very much. Uh yeah. Just Okay, so the apple juice. Okay, hey, apple juice has gone up a little bit. It's it's gone up from 250. It's now up to 300. I mean, I'll sell for I'll sell for 250. Look, 250 is fine. It's it's better than the uh, than the 80 gill that I would get for just vendor trashing it. It's better than that. I'm pretty sure that this actually would be... Why, why am I going for thousands? I'm pretty sure this would actually let me break even on, on the cost if I, if I did it for all of them. But that's just... Like, honestly, that is more hassle than it's worth for how little you get. Right? A little bit too much hassle. But my cooking skill... Got that up. So the next thing I want to level. Now, the first craft is not going to level. But it's gonna... It's building up to something. So we take one Wind Crystal and one Yagudo Necklace. And this is a desynthesis recipe. So the, I the idea is that we are ripping this thing apart and just breaking it down into components. Yagudo necklaces are common as dirt, and they are very cheap on the auction house. Wind crystals, not so much. Wind crystals are actually a little bit... they're a little bit expensive. But not that expensive. This is a very cheap craft. But this time around, I, uh, I, I sourced all the materials myself. So let's see if I can actually succeed. It's uh, as far as I know, this is a level one craft. As, as far as I know. Though I did just realize something. It's uh, it's Earth Day, right? I just realized it's Earth Day. I I think that when you're on an opposite element day, I I think that actually does affect crafting. It would explain why I just failed a lot when. Not really, there's no reason for that, right? <clears throat> I'm higher level than this craft, too. It's a. It's just a level one recipe. So I, I shouldn't have issues with it. So for now, I guess let's not do that. For now, let's just stick to the cooking, right? Doing a wind craft on Earth Day. Look. There's a lot of voodoo in this game. I don't know if this is voodoo or just bad luck. But two broken crafts in a row? Uh, that, that makes me lean towards maybe... Maybe don't do a wind craft on an Earth day. Alright, so crystals. Water crystals. So water crystals are... Yeah, only 300 gil. <laughs> Water crystals are com completely worthless, more or less. I don't know why. Water crystals have a lot of good use to them. Like, you can... Like, cooking. There's so many good... There are a lot of good cooking recipes that need water crystals. Like, water crystals actually do have a lot of useful crafts. I... I mean, you know, water crystals are common, but I mean, so are a lot of crystals. Like, there's lots of crystals that are insanely common, and yet, like, fire crystals, even wind crystals. You can kill level 1 bees outside of the stock and you'll get wind crystals. So, like, all the crystals are fairly common. I, I have never understood why some crystals sell for so much more. I, uh, I've never really gotten that. 
Alright, so... More apple juice. More! I demand more apple juice! I mean, I already got to uh, crafting 18 with cooking, so I can already do the guild quest and rank up. That's a good mile marker right there, but uh, this recipe will take me all the way to 20, and it's, it's a very cheap recipe, so, I mean, really, why not? Like, if you have a cheap recipe that's easy to do, not really any good reason to not just do it and, like, max it out. Like, I could move on to a different recipe, but it'll probably cost more guild to do. Hmm. Oh, hey, someone's talking about Yagudo beads. Like, or did, was there- I, I wasn't paying too much attention to the chat here. Well, apparently though, they were at zero skill and they were HQing with Yagudo beads. But me, I'm, uh, I'm at level 2 cloth craft and I am not doing good with those beads. <laughs> So I, I do think there, I think there's a lot of voodoo in this game, but I do think there is maybe something to the, the, uh, the day of the week affecting the craft. I mean, to me that just makes sense, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's Earth Day, so don't do a wind craft. That, like, I, I don't think the day of the week has, like, a huge effect on your craft, but I feel like it has some effect. Either way, the Yagudo necklaces, those aren't expensive, but the wind crystals are. <laughs> the wind crystals are not cheap. I did kill a wind elemental. It's uh, Now that I know where and how to farm wind elementals, it's not hard to get more crystals. But you have to keep in mind that uh, you could just sell them. Like, anytime you're not selling, uh, technically that's money you could have had, right? So I like to factor it into the cost of, of whatever I make. Also, man, it's gotten quiet. Uh, I don't think I'll go too much longer, too. Uh, both because the, you know, the chat's calmed down. But also, uh, I did what I wanted to do, which is I unlocked Ninja. I'm gonna level it up on my own time. I started my next nation quest. Like, I, I did the things I wanted to do. And they, they were a little time consuming. So now I'm just, yeah, just hunkering down and doing a little crap. Which I, like, I never, oh, oh, Synthesis cancelled. We're out of, we're out of apples. So the thing is, I never really got into crafting in this game. The, the closest to crafting that I ever got, like, the absolute closest thing to crafting that I ever got was, uh, was fishing. I really like fishing in this game. Fishing in this game is very chill to me. I enjoy it, but... But yeah, I never, uh... Also, I'm, I'm not gonna sell all these. The, the chance that all of those apple juices are even gonna sell is very slim. So most of these I'm just gonna vendor trash. But yeah, I, I never really got that into the non-combat stuff in FF11. But I feel like that's a bit of a missed opportunity, right? I, I feel like there was a lot of... Like, there's a lot going on in Final Fantasy XI. 
You know, it's not just fighting the same enemy crab 10,000 times all day forever. It's not just that. I mean, there's a whole world of just exploration, gathering, and crafting. Things that don't involve hitting stuff with a sword. So, I, I would like to actually do some of that. I'd like to explore all the elements that the game has to offer. Okay. Hit me up with those apples. I demand more apples. Also, they have Lafine Cabbage here, which, uh, if you want to increase your fame with both Bestock and Sandoria, uh, yeah, that Lafine Cabbage, uh, that, that is a turn-in for, uh, the fame quest in Salbina, the guy next to the sheep. And at 22 gil each, I think you might actually make a little... Like, I think you might make gil doing the quest at that price. I I'm not sure how much my fame factors into the cost of goods. Um, like, my fame, I'm I'm either at rank 3 or 4 fame in Sandoria. I've done, I've done a lot of quests in Sandoria. Okay, so I got my water crystals, I got my fairy apples. Sit your ass down and get back to crafting. The goal is 20. I hit 20 and... I, I literally can't level up anymore. I have to go and do the guild quest. The one thing I am wondering... I am wondering if... So hear me out. These fairy apples are very cheap from this merchant. I'm wondering if I could sell these apples on the auction house to people that are just lazy and don't want to walk all the way to Sandoria, right? I'm wondering if I could maybe turn a little profit off of uh, flipping these apples. Uh, yeah, true, the Juno fame. Yeah, well, I, I mean, isn't isn't Juno fame just sort of like a, an amalgamation of... Like, it, it's kind of a mix of your fame in Sandoria, Bastok, and Windurst, right? Which, the one I gotta work on is Windurst. I, uh, I feel like there just aren't as many good... Like, like, I feel like there aren't as many good, easy, repeatable quests in Windurst. Maybe I'm overlooking some quests, like, may or maybe there's something in Mara, but... I know there's the Cornet one, but you have to buy Cornets in the stock, so that's not really... That's not as convenient, right? I don't know. Okay, yeah, Cornets. The only thing is, it's a little bit of a hassle to, to like... Go okay, so like I have to go to Bastok, which means I have to teleport to the Gustaberg outpost, and then I have to walk my ass over to Bastok, <laughs> buy the cornets, and then I have to either use a warp scroll or I need to walk back to the outpost again, and then teleport over to uh, to Saruta Baruta, and then go into Winder. Like it's it's a little bit of a hassle. It, I guess you could just buy the cornets on the auction house, but I'm... Oh, inventory full. Uh, I'm pretty sure that cornets are going to be jacked up on the auction house. Like, specifically because of, you know, people that would want to just buy it and turn it in for the quest. But I could be wrong. I, I haven't actually looked at the price of cornets. Also, I didn't even say hey. I, I didn't even say hey, butter. Ahoy and welcome. <laughs> All right, getting that cooking skill up. I'm I'm still not a hundred percent sure which uh, like which crafting class I want to take up to to max level. Like I I don't know which one I want to go to a hundred with because I I think you can only go up to a hundred with one. I, I believe. 
I'm not sure if this server has any custom rules about that, but, but normally you can only 100 a uh, single thing. And fishing. Fishing is a free one. And I, I'm definitely 100 in fishing. I love fishing. But, uh... I feel like since I enjoy Beastmaster, I I am a Beastmaster enjoyer, uh, I feel like cooking is the way. I mean also just there's so much, you know, I like fishing, I like Beastmaster, both make and or use things that cooking also uses, so I, I feel like it just makes sense for me. Okay, so there's... Uh, I see. Oh, I thought it was 50. I, I thought, um... I thought 50 was the limit if you don't 100 it. Maybe it's 60, I don't know. I... But my plan, uh, since you can have three characters on this server, I mean, yeah, I could have, like, three characters with their own unique maxed out thing, but I don't really want to play three characters. <laughs> Okay, so I maxed out my cooking for now. Uh, 20's as high as I can go for the moment. But uh, what I was thinking is, is I I want to take cooking up all the way, and then you know fishing that's a freebie, so take that up to 100. And then I want to get all the other crafts up to 60 or however high they can go. Uh, I want to do that, and the reason is because there is so much. Like, in the mid, in the low to mid levels, and even some high level stuff, I think you can still desynth it even at, at 60. Uh, there's so much stuff that is really good to desynth for, uh, for materials and money. Like, that alone makes it worth ranking the skills up, right? Like, just to desynth. And to be able to make some useful things, so... That's kind of my end goal for the character, is to... <laughs> To have it as high as it'll all go. That's a, that, that's a goal. Alright, how many fairy apples have I got? got quite a lot. Uh, I don't need to make any more apple juice. It doesn't really do me any good to craft the rest of it. So I'm gonna sell the uneven stack. So let's do a little math here. So the fairy apples are 42 gil each, so let me think, 10 would be 400, so that'd be 420 for, for 10, right? then plus uh, 84, so it's like a little over 500, so it's, it's a little over 500 gil for a stack of fairy apples, so if I can sell them for 600 gil or more, I could make my money back. Let's see how much they sell for on the auction house. I'm sure, I'm sure someone is gonna be lazy and they're gonna buy those apples, right? Because that's how this game works. Like, even for things that you can literally buy off of an NPC in town, people will buy it for more because they're lazy and they don't want to go to that specific merchant in town. So let's see what fairy apples are good for. Because I, I kind of bought way too many. I thought, like, I thought it was gonna take a lot more runs to to get to 20. The the levels just flew by. Which I don't know. I, I guess that's just lucky, right? Hmm. <laughs> okay, so they sell for 500. I mean, that would allow me to make back most of the money that I put into it. I mean, I'm not hurting for that gill, but... Yeah... Okay, so I'm gonna undercut a little bit. 470. If I can just get most of the money back on those, I'd be happy. I just bought way too many. Like, usually my crafting skill levels up so goddamn slow, I thought that's gonna take a ton of crafts, right? But nah, nah, that went, that went nice and fast, nice and smooth.
Okay, and... I do have a lot of extra water crystals. <laughs> they are also not really worth very much guild, so... I'll, I'll sell them and take what I can get. I always undercut forever. Never stop undercutting. <laughs> Okay, so now I just have my Wind Crystals, my Earth Crystals. Oh, I have a little more Water Crystals than I thought I had. Hmm. Huh. Okay. So yeah, there's my, uh, my sales list. No one's bought my gold lobster or ogre eels. They're just sitting there. And and that one shell bug, but I don't think people really buy singular shell bugs. Is that a thing? Do people buy that? Well, it's only uh, someone undercut by a lot. That's why this isn't so. Honestly, I, I just free up the space. Just free up the space. So here's the thing. The other thing that I wanted to craft is I wanted to take these Yagudo necklaces and break them down with wind crystals. It's it's like a level one craft, right? And I'm level two cloth craft, so uh, this won't this isn't a skill thing, but it's so that I can get more threads to work with so that I can skill up. Uh, the thing is, is that um, I tried two crafts and they both broke. So, I'm not sure if that's normal or if it's because today is Earth Day. I know there's so much voodoo in this game when it comes to crafting or anything, really. There's, there's so many weird rituals that people have about this game. And I don't know how much of that's real and how much of it is just superstition. It's, it's really hard to separate the two. But to me, it does kind of make sense that uh, wind-based crafts would be less successful on Earth Day, right? That sounds like it would make sense, but I'm not sure if that's voodoo or not. Either way, I, I broke two... Uh, I, I broke two crystals, so I... I'm gonna err on the side of caution, and I'm gonna wait until it's not Earth Day to to craft those. But in in the moment, and that's all I had wanted to craft. I do have uh, oh yeah, so I killed an elemental and I got some extra wind crystals. Like I I bought I bought two stacks of wind crystals. And then I went out and did something, and I killed an elemental. It was just there in my way, and I got two, and I got two stacks of wind crystals. So hey, I guess if I want to make some of my money back, what I could do is, like, okay, for two stacks of Yagudo necklaces, I'm pretty sure I won't need all four of these wind crystal stacks. So. I could sell one of them off, right? I also, wind weather is very common. Like, it's really not hard to get... It's not hard to get wind crystals. It's not. But yeah, they're worth about 1,300 right now. 1,300, 1,400, they kind of bounce between that. Hmm. Oh, okay, so so it's just that Decent has a higher fail chance, which I, I would assume, though, that if you're, like, if your skill is higher than the recipe, I would assume that that helps you, right? <laughs> but I, I'm only cloth craft too, so it's not going to help me that much. All right, well, you know what? Let's pound it out, then. Let's, uh, let's roll the dice. Again, I am very new to crafting in this game. I, I, I played this game back in the day, and I never... Well, there was so much I never knew about or learned about. 
And I'm only now, like, I've only really started getting into fishing in this game in like the last year or so playing on private servers. And now on Horizon, which I'm having a blast with, um, now I'm really getting into the game. And yeah, I want to see everything it has to offer in terms of just gameplay. Crafting is gameplay that I, I never got into. I, I think the reason I never got into the crafting is because it's a little convoluted to even figure out how to do it. And then once you do it, uh, most of your early crafting is just going to be breaking things. Like when I failed this craft twice in a row, I thought, oh, oh, am I doing something wrong? But no, that's, that's just the game, so... It's a... it's a bit of a barrier to entry. Okay, so decent thing just... it just breaks more. Good to know, good to know. But like, this is the main reason that I want to... like, that I want to level up all the crafts as much as I can. Because there's so many materials that I find commonly like goblin armors and shit like that. There's so much common stuff that you find that if you can successfully break them down, like, it's really worth it. Like, they're worth a lot more than just selling the item. Nine spools of grass thread! God damn! That's almost a full stack right there in one craft. Very nice. I'm not sure how much uh, grass thread sells for. We'll see. I, I just want it for crafting purposes. Uh, oh god, 300k to get a, a single point one skill up. Yeah, see, I, I don't know that I want to go that high with uh, with 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 too many crafts, but... <clears throat> but I at least want to dip my toes into crafting, because I, I feel like even with the low-level crafts, there's a lot of very useful things you can do with it. <clears throat> I mean, I'd... Like, for me, I'd just like to be able to make my own high-quality, um, carrot broth. Like, like high-quality carrot broth makes a pretty nice pet that I can use all the way to level 75 on this server. It's just, it's a high-quality craft, right? But it's a level 3 recipe, so, uh... <laughs> you don't have to get too high to, to HQ that. But I... So, okay, look, this is the thing. I've never gotten that far with Final Fantasy XI, alright? Like, I've never gotten much higher than level 50 in this game. I'm kind of a perma-noob, if you will. But I don't understand how people can get, like... Like, I, I don't understand how you can get to the point where you can just drop 300k on, like, getting 0.1 skill point. Or, uh, like, I, I see in the link shell some people talking about, like, oh, you're level 50 now. I need 700k to get my paladin gear. And it's like, I don't... I don't understand how you have that much gil. Or... Or... Like, how, how long, like, like, I, that feels like torture to just, to spend so much for a temporary purchase, basically. Like something you're gonna out-level, even. Like, I've, I've never really gotten to a point in this game where I can just make gil. I, I've never really gotten to that point. <laughs> like, I can go fishing, and I can make a couple thousand gil in an hour. <laughs> Uh, I can go into I can go to Kuvam Island and uh, between Banshees and uh, let's see between Banshees and Thunder Elementals I can I can get like maybe 20 30k in in an hour's time maybe <laughs> like I don't fucking get it <laughs> I, I don't understand how people have so much guilt. I mean, I, I guess I, some people camp rare enemies and, like, 
like leaping boots, right? If you can sell leaping boots, that's a lot of gil, right? But outside of that, how do you do it? <laughs> Ah, I see. Oh. Uh, I think the wife is hungry. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll wrap things up in a sec, but let me, let me see. Uh, elemental Ore. Oh yeah, I haven't done any BCNMs. Um, I have not done any BCNMs ever in Final Fantasy XI. Like, uh, I just never... It, it's something that back in the day, I didn't even know that was a thing. And on Horizon, I want to get into it, but I'm not really, you know, I have no experience with BCNMs. But I, I have heard the, that you can you can fairly easily get some good stuff. Yeah, end game. Like I don't even want to think about end game. <laughs> I'm probably not gonna get there. I'm, I'm gonna be honest. If I hit level 75, I would be very surprised. I, so the thing is, as much as I love this game, generally I don't go much higher than like level 50. Uh, usually the game gets a little too grindy, a little too hard, a little too not fun around 50 to 60. So that's usually my drop off point, but Horizon, I like the changes they've made to the game, and uh, the game feels a little more fun, so... I am going to try to go all the way on this server. Now, I'll do end game, I don't know, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try to at least get to the finish line. Like, I uh, I got to level 50 with Beastmaster, which Beastmaster is my favorite class. I love it. Just vanilla, it's a good, strong, you know, solo-friendly class. On Horizon, it's goddamn amazing. But, um... Yeah, I haven't even done my limit break one. I'm I'm basically slowing down, and um, oh, God, look at that. Uh, I do have a lot of gra grass threat, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm not doing my limit break one. I'm taking the time to level up my trade skills, level up my fishing, um, maybe get some field gear. I don't know. Um, like I'm taking this as an opportunity to flesh my character out and get more, you know, do some quests, unlock more classes, just get more experienced with the world, and then you know, maybe do some PCNMs too, and then I'll do the limit break one and I'll keep going. But, but yeah, I, uh, I, I always just, I, I always drop off at this point, and I want to, I want to try not to do that, and I think what might help me is just I think what'll help me is if I don't worry about leveling up so much, and I just try to have fun and just do all the things that I can do up to level 50, right? Like, really get into it, and I think that might help me. But also, I mean, even, okay, look, even more so than the changes on Horizon and all that, um, I think what's really kind of pushed me on this server is that this is a very active server. Like, like, you look around, there's just people playing the game, right? And uh, other private servers I've played on, uh, they're very light on people. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you tend to just sort of be alone most of the time. And then it, it feels less fun, right? So just having a ton of people just playing here and just, you know, just interacting with the community and all of that, it's, uh, yeah, that helps. That helps. But anyway, let's, uh, let's get out of here. Alright, I... Well, let's break one more crystal and let's get out of here. Um... <laughs> uh, but also, uh, as I leave, I will say... Out of all the private servers I've played on, I, I think for playing during EU hours, which I am, um, I think Horizon is like the most active server I've been on for non-NA times, which is very good. I don't like staying up after midnight to, to like, get into an EXP party. I, 
I don't enjoy that very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, the thing is, is I, I realize it's slowed down, and that's normal, that's to be expected, but, like, compare that to even, uh, I was playing on, so I, I started with Nasomi years ago. That server never had a ton of people, and also the server is just a little jank. Um, I played on Eden for a lot. I, uh, I'm more or less the same level on Eden. And, uh, like, even when Eden had more players on it, when I was playing, there was only, like, maybe 500 people tops. Now there's, like, 200 people tops when I'm playing. So, like, having, like, a thousand to two thousand when I play, that's pretty goddamn good. That's, that's pretty nice to me. Like, that is a healthy population. I, I wish I could see what it looks like during NA hours, but I ain't staying up to, like, 3 in the morning. I ain't doing that. <laughs> oh, have I, have I used up all my... No, I haven't used them all yet. Up yet. I, okay, I have two Yagudo necklaces. I can, I can break those real quick. Uh, yes, yes, Butter. Germany. Uh, I moved here. That's the thing. So, uh, that's the hours I play in now. It's, uh, it kinda sucks. I, I've, I've completely lost track with, uh, you know, people I used to play with and all that, but got, gotta find new people to play with. There's a, there's a shocking amount of German players on this server. Like, I, I think, like, quite a few of the Link Shell people that I've, uh, I've talked to are German. It's, a uh, I see why the game is popular with Germans, I really do. <laughs> a good opportunity to work on, on my language skills. <laughs> Gotta level that language skill up. Uh. Alright, so I broke all my Yagudo necklaces, right? Oh, no, no, I got one more. O okay, I, I lost the crystal, but I didn't break the... Gotta break the necklace. Alright, but, uh... Did I break it? Okay, I broke it. All necklaces broken. So that's a good point to end it on. The wife is hungry, I'm hungry, everybody's hungry. It's time to make dinner. But, um... But thanks for, you know... Sorry it's a little abrupt. Um... Life. I'm, I am the dinner maker. <laughs> So, uh, thanks for showing up, though. Uh, always nice to see people pop in and have some Final Fantasy chat. And not just be angry that it's a private server, e it's, it's It's nice when people just, just chill and let's talk about Final Fantasy, right? <laughs> okay, so, see you guys next time. I hope you had fun. Thanks for showing up. Let's, let's get out of here. Later.